Well, hi, hello, and a warm welcome to this week's video where I'm talking all about how to find the right platform to sell your artwork. Now, I know as an artist, this can be a massive challenge, and especially right now, filming this video in 2021. There are so many options out there. There are endless online options and also endless offline options. Where do you start? Now, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the major mistakes that artists make right out of the gate. And of course, how to make sure that you don't make those mistakes and that you get it right from the get go. Now stay right to the end too, because I'm going to share the two most important pieces of this whole art platform puzzle. Now, if this is the first time watching, my name's Sophie Mahir and I help female artists to make a living from their art or creativity by building a stable, profitable business doing what they love. And if all things art business related is what you're here for, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell to get notified every single time I post a new video. So let me walk you through the six things that you need to understand before making that decision of where you're going to be selling your artwork. Number one, one of the biggest mistakes artists make is not having a business plan. So by the whole action of filling out your business plan, you will have answered a lot of the questions that you might be thinking when you think of where should I be selling? What platform should I put my work or my art services on? Right? And very often the reason this question is asked is because there's no business plan. So I'm going to suggest to you, if you haven't already, get yourself a business plan done. Now it's something that we teach in our Art Business Academy membership. We also have a course specifically for how to build your artist business plan. I will put links to those things below this video. So part of filling out your plan is looking at what you're selling, who you'd like to sell it to, your marketing around that positioning, the time it takes to make the product, lots of different things that you need to really understand fully before you can even begin to make this decision of where you're going to sell your artwork. So the second piece is coming out of that plan and that is to really understand what it is you're selling. Are you selling large original abstract artwork on canvas? Are you selling limited edition prints? Are you selling digital prints, jewelry, ceramics, handmade, I don't know, items? What are you actually selling? So to fully understand that, you need to again be making some notes. It's a big part, of course, of your plan. You might discover that you're going to be selling the, your different items on different platforms. So for example, as an artist, I do create original art artwork on canvases. I also have limited edition prints, but I also have print on demand products. That means my artwork is available on products. Are they all on the same platform? No. So it's really good to understand what you're selling. That's a big piece of where the decision is of where you're going to actually place them. Okay. Number three, probably the most important part of all of this is you need to know who your target audience is. Who's that person? Who's the ideal customer that's going to want to buy what you have to offer? If you don't understand this piece, check out this video here where I talk all about target audience and how to find them. If you're not sure, or in fact, you haven't even thought about this, you've just created something and now you want to find a platform to put it on, you need to stop and fully understand. Now we have a free resource available as well that I'll put a link to below this video. It's the Ideal Customer Avatar Worksheet. Hmm, sounds a bit techy, right? But actually, it's just a few pages where you can really dive a bit deeper and working out who is this person that's gonna buy what I have to offer. And I promise you, you can't really choose the right platform for your artwork if you don't understand your audience. Number four, once you've done that, you have to ask the question, where are they shopping already? Okay, are they shopping on online marketplaces like um, Etsy or Art Finder or Saatchi Art? Are they already there looking? Or perhaps they don't use online shops at all. Perhaps they prefer to use uh, local galleries, boutiques, markets. They shop local. They don't really use social media. Are they on Instagram? Are they on Facebook? Are they looking to buy on Pinterest? or aren't they using those? You need to understand where they are already in order for you to make that decision. Because if you've discovered your ideal audience spends all their time on Pinterest and they shop on Pinterest, but you don't even have a Pinterest account and then you're trying to sell your work over here, it's a big mismatch, all right? 
big mistake that gets made, but that's okay, because you're not gonna do that ever again. So number five of the things that you need to understand before choosing that all important um, placement of your artwork, and that is some offline options. So if you've decided that you're going to sell your artwork offline because you've discovered your audience are not online, <laughs> you discovered you need to find some physical placement, there's two real different sides to this. So I like to just split it down the middle and make this really easy. So offline events that are organized by third party, so that might be an art fair or art exhibition that's organized by a gallery or a, a, some sort of third party versus the event that you put on yourself. So open studio trail that you've decided to be part of, solo open studio, not part of a trail. Big group exhibition in a gallery, fully backed by the gallery, you've hired a gallery space to do a show on your own. All right, you've, um, you're part of a big art fair, or you've decided to take a stand at a local shopping center. I think the idea is that, you know, there's a specific market coming to these events with the third party, and although you still have to do some marketing, you've already got customers coming. It's a bit like choosing Etsy versus your own website, all right, which we're gonna to come to in a moment. So you want to be very clear when choosing where to position, A, where your audience is, and also, you know, what are your skills and time available in terms of marketing? If you're great at that, then you might choose doing your own events, or if you're not so good at it, you might go with something where a third party organized and an audience is being brought to. Number six, I've hinted at it already, and this is the thing that you need to work out before choosing that platform to sell your artwork. We're talking about online options. All right, very similar to the offline options, in that there are some places called marketplaces that already have an audience shopping. We've mentioned it a few times, it's easy, it's obvious, and that's something like Etsy. Or online galleries that are set up as marketplaces, they have an audience, they're actively building an audience of buyers who come to that site, the site is very buyer shopper friendly, all right? Versus having, for example, your own website. There's no audience there unless you send them there. So you need to make those decisions. So let's just a bit of a, a bit of a recap. Having a business plan is gonna sort all of this out. Understanding what you're selling, understanding who your audience are and where they hang out, understanding where they're already shopping and the kind of shopping habits that they have already, and then making these decisions. You know, once you know that, is it gonna be offline or online? And if it's offline, are you gonna be doing something that's organized by a third party or are you gonna go it on your own? The same for online. You're going where there's already people shopping or are you just gonna go out on your own? All right, I'm hoping that all of these are gonna give you some ideas now of how you can make sure that you make the right choice for your work. Now, I promised you at the beginning that I was gonna share two things that are super, super, super important to all of this and they're coming up right now. All right, number one. Again, I've kind of hinted at it. No matter what you choose, you still have to do the marketing. So one of the biggest mistakes I also see is somebody who says, it's okay, I've put my artwork up on an online gallery. Um, I now don't need to do any marketing whatsoever. Wrong, you still have to market. You should be doing your own general, on what I call ongoing marketing anyway, but you still want to send people to that site that you've chosen, whether it's online or offline, you still need to send them to that event and find out more about that event, especially when you're starting out, right? There's a kind of tipping point that happens further down the track where there's enough people on there, enough people who found out about you, and after a while you perhaps are not gonna to need to send quite so much traffic to that site, but initially, you know, please don't do what a lot of people do is I've put, you know, 10 paintings up on this site or I've listed my workshop on this site and there's supposed to be people looking for workshops and now I'm sitting here waiting for the phone to ring. It's not gonna work like that. You've gotta put in the work and the effort in order to get the results. Right. Number two, you must be building your artist's mailing list, all right? You need to be in control of your art business because if you're not, that third party is, all right? There's a lot of grumblings around one particular at marketplace online at the moment and it's like well they have every right to change their rules and regulations because it's their platform 
So consider taking some of the control back. Make sure you build your own mailing list so that you can contact your customers and you can build connection and trust between them. So one of the things that you wanna be doing is checking out these videos here all about building your artist mailing list. Right now as well, we're right at the time of shooting this, we are just about to run a challenge in our free Facebook group, the Business for Artists Facebook group. So if you're watching this around the time of July 2021, then we have a 10 day challenge about to start, which is how to set up your mailing list. So if that's something you're floundering on or the tech is kind of banging on your head and you're pulling your hair out and you're like, I don't quite know how to get this done, then we have some help for you as well. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed that content and I hope you're now getting excited when you think about, now what are you gonna choose? Once you've done the work of these steps, I promise you it'll make it so much easier. Once you have chosen where you're gonna place your artwork, please let us know in the comments because we'd really, really, really wanna hear from you. We wanna find out where exactly are you gonna be putting your artwork or art services for sale. Oh, and if you've really enjoyed this video, please give it a like because it really helps build my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.